Hi there, Redneck Preppy with you. And today we're going to discuss a topic which I'm sure will trigger some people. And that is the notion of three shot groups and why I consider them to be largely invalid. So if you're a member of any forums or Facebook groups uh, devoted to reloading, shooting, guns in general, whatever it may be, you're oftentimes going to see people post pictures of their groups. And nine times out of 10, it seems that these groups are three shot groups. Now, the reason why I consider them to be invalid in approving whatever it is that the person posting the pictures is attempting to assert is a concept in statistics, at least how I refer to it, I'm sure textbooks have a different name for it, is data validity. And that's a fancy way of saying, do you have enough data and the right kind of data in order to prove whatever it is that you're attempting to assert? It is my deeply held belief and the belief of many people that three shot groups really don't tell you very much about what you, your rifle and your ammunition are doing. Now, I know some people out there are going to say that, you know, my three shot groups have always steered me in the right direction. And, you know, uh, with three shot groups, I've improved both the accuracy of my rifle, myself or the ammunition, or again, some combination of those three. I would argue that that may actually be accidentally what's happening. Uh, but your three shot group isn't actually telling you what it is that is happening when you are shooting these groups. Now, I know that's going to be a controversial assertion for many people, uh, but here is why I think three shot groups are invalid. So as you can see on your screen, we have a standard target. The red dot at the middle of the target represents the point of aim by our hypothetical shooter. Before we begin, let's stipulate a few things. One, the shooter is using a 308 caliber rifle of reasonable quality with ammunition of similar loads, whether it's factory or hand loads. Two, the rifle is in a sled to remove the shooter from the equation and the point of aim is reset after each shot to ensure the rifle is aimed at the same point in case the sled moved. Three, they're shooting at 100 yards. And four, environmental factors won't be an issue given the distance and the caliber of the round. Things like wind and the Coriolis effect will have no effect on the shots. So let's move to our first group. The shooter takes aim at a fresh target and fires three times, taught by the web's grand experts that only three rounds are necessary to determine accuracy. Now, as you can see, the shooter achieves a decent group that measures 0.743 MOA, a little taller than it's wider, clearly off to the right of their point of aim. Now, he's not concerned about point of impact because he's only interested in group size today. Adjusting point of impact to match point of aim is just a simple matter of sight or scope adjustment. At any rate, emboldened by that first blush of success, he takes aim at another target and fires three times and again rattles off a decent group, this time a little larger but still sub 1 MOA, measuring in at 0.882 MOA, about 17% larger than the first group. Again, the height a little larger than the width, but a group that I think most people would be happy with. Another target, another three shots, and once again our shooter posts a sub one MOA group, this one measuring in at 0 0.978 MOA. Three groups and all three sub one MOA. This is proof positive to the shooter that he does in fact have a sub MOA rifle and ammunition and as long as they don't screw up their mechanics, they could theoretically shoot under one MOA all day, every day. They quickly race home and post the picture of their 0 0.743 MOA group. Internet experts know you only post one group and always the best one to proclaim their success. Except, except the observant of you may have already noticed the problem. Here's all nine shots on one target, as if the shooter hadn't shot three at three targets, but all at one. Now, as you can see, those sub-MOA groups suddenly don't look quite as impressive, do they? 
In fact, had the shooter shot this group, and pretend that there's a tenth shot in there somewhere if you need round numbers, they would have noticed that their rifle and ammunition was walking rounds upwards. The cause? It could be any number of things, but it happened. Now, I know that some of you out there are going to shout that the spread that I've portrayed over the past few pictures is a bit unrealistic. Fine. Squeeze this 9.63 MOA group down to 1 MOA. Guess what? Nothing actually changes. That first group now would be 0 0.370 MOA, still less than half the size of the pretend 1 MOA 9-shot group. It still means that the rifle over 9 shots shot at about 2.7 times larger at the biggest group than it did the smallest 3-shot group. The size of the individual group stays relative to the whole theoretical 9-shot group, no matter if the 9-shot group is 2 MOA or 1 MOA. Of course, you'd be happier with the 1 MOA. The problem for the shooter is that the 9-shot group wasn't 1 MOA, it was nearly 2 MOA. That turns their decent rifle with the 0 0.743 MOA group into a more pedestrian 2 MOA group. Also, another reason why this example has validity is because I actually saw this with my own eyes this past summer when a fellow shooter at the range showed off his three-shot groups, not noticing what had happened. I pointed out that he might want to try bigger groups, but he told me that he, and I quote, only needed three shots to see what was happening. Okay. At any rate, getting back to our hypothetical shooter, had they shot even a five-shot group, they would have noticed immediately that their initial result was rapidly going south, or north if you want to be a smartass. Here are the first five shots fired from that nine-shot group. As you can see, with that three-shot group immediately turns into a rifle stringing rounds vertically with the addition of two shots. Again, that could be a mechanical issue with the rifle, loose scope, barrel that starts slinging when it gets warm, something to do with the ammunition, who knows. As the rifle was properly installed in a sled for this example, we'll remove shooter error. So if you had shot a five shot group, which I would consider to be the bare minimum to get reasonably valid results, although I can tell you that for actual serious weapons and ammunition evaluation by professional organizations and militaries that they tend to use things like 30-shot groups, our shooter would have actually received a result more in line with the 9-shot group. Here you can see that those five initial shots measured 1.722 MOA, not far from the 1.963 MOA of the 9-shot group. Now again, some of you are likely going to object and say that the fifth shot, or perhaps even any of the shots on the margins, like shot one and shot nine, could be flyers and actually artificially increasing the size of the group. I would respond that if you fire enough shots, and I would again submit that 10 is generally where you want to be for casual testing or measuring accuracy, those shots would naturally fall into the area between the flyers and the other impacts and make that group reasonably rounded. All that said, with those outliers removed, you're still looking at a 1.346 MOA group, not the 0 0.743 MOA that the shooter thought they had initially achieved. It's still nearly double. Also, with just three shots, you're tempted to consider a flyer to be a function of shooter error. You flinched, you pulled a shot, whatever, and ignore the fact that it might not be a flyer at all. More shots would have shown that, or potentially could have shown that. Here's another thing to consider, the spread between the largest and the smallest three-shot groups. You might consider a 0 0.235 MOA difference between the two to be negligible, but that's actually a 27.3% difference between the two numbers. Now I could go really deep in the weeds here on two different approaches, the first being mathematics and the topic of radius, or radii I guess if you want to be accurate, and the second being on how to determine a valid number of data points in order to be able to conduct statistical analysis on those points. As I have no real desire to relive the last three years of my university career, I'm going to leave it up to you to research the statistical aspect of it. As for the mathematics, I'm not trying to put you to sleep even if I'm achieving it at this moment. It's not hard to find out more about this if you want to go down those two particular rabbit holes. At the end of the day, the math, and I think common sense, shows that three-shot groups may give you the proper information. 
The problem is you don't have enough data points to know for certain that your rifle and ammunition really are a sub-MOA combination or whatever it is that you're trying to prove. You can't really argue otherwise. It's like arguing that after three boys your wife would undoubtedly give birth to another boy. Well, you might be right. You'll only actually know, though, if you uh, <coughs> fire another shot to find out. So if you want to rely on three-shot groups going forward to measure the accuracy of your rifle and how well your ammunition, be it factory or hand loads, perform together, you know, go right ahead. At the end of the day, we're talking about the size of groups on pieces of paper. This isn't a critical thing. Using more rounds for groups is not a waste of ammunition or time, however, they're allowing you to collect a statistically valid data set. That said, if you use three shot groups as an evaluatory mechanism and you find that you're having issues with replicating results, you might need to change your mind on how you're evaluating. And that change is to move to a five or far better 10 shot group. To quote Ellen Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo. It's the only way to be sure. And there you go. That is why I consider three shot groups to be invalid, or at least not provide you the necessary amount of information that you need to prove whatever it is that you may be asserting. Now I realize I'm going to get a lot of brush back from people who disagree. They believe that three shot groups give them exactly what they need. They're not wasting ammunition and uh, they're happy with the results that they get from them and whatever it is that they're trying to assert. And that's fine. This isn't a religious or a political battle. If three shot groups are your, uh, you know, mother's milk, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to remain believing that uh, five and ten shot groups are far more statistically valid and actually measure what it is that you're trying to prove. If you disagree, hey, look, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to debate the point with you and perhaps you'll bring up some arguments that I hadn't considered. At any rate, uh, in the description below, you'll find links to my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Feel free to check them out. Uh, if you liked the video, thumbs up. You didn't like the video, hey, thumbs down. It's all good, man. Huh? And if you like what I do here on the channel, please feel free to subscribe. It's certainly appreciated. I hope that all your shots ring true, even if they're only three-shot groups. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.